Hey, welcome to the Connors TV podcast. Apparently, here at a kennel. <laughs> A very fancy kennel, though. Uh, it's fancy. It's oh, very you. swanky. <laughs> oh, you fancy, huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm here with two lovely young ladies. I'm your host, Knowledge. And so tell the guys, tell, the people have heard you before. They've heard you on the Kind of Sleepy podcast. They haven't heard your fur babies, but they're getting... Tell us about your fur babies first, because they're clearly stealing the show. Tell me about your fur babies. <laughs> All right, so who you hear in the background is uh, Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. The so, Pomeranian. Yeah, that's the that's the dog that, I mean, that's the skunk from the cartoons that should be a part of the Me Too movement. Yes. And uh, <laughs> your fur baby is here too, correct? Yes, my fur baby is here. Uh, his name is Prince Trey Money Shownuff Williams. So your dog is a pimp. Well, you know, uh, he, 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 he got a few. He got some bitches. He do. He got a few <laughs> bitches, you know. Uh, you know, he got, he got a theme song, actually. Uh, he got, your dog has a theme song. He does. What, he does. What's your dog's theme song? Shall we? Nola B. Kick it off for him, then. Trey Money. I, I like it. it. I used to have okay, hoes. Okay, 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 Who? okay. No, no. Uh, Let's, okay, let's, or not? Let, let's let's not and say we did. Okay. Okay. Well, you yeah, know, I got right. money. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how about you tell the people who you are? They, they, you've already said one person's name, Nola B. Nola B. Tell them who you are. That's me. I'm Nola B. The N. The O. The L. The A. You said no to that last time, but we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna let you live. B. Ooh. I'm gonna Nola let you B. live. I'm gonna let you live. Ooh. And uh, who's this? Who is this? Who is this? This is no other than K. Dion. You know, in the building, kicking it off. Hey. With my boo. Ooh. <laughs> and our fur babies. And our fur and babies. And the fur babies. And so what we're doing here today is introducing your new show. What's it called? Melanin and Merlot. Melanin and Merlot. These are a few of my favorite things. Since we're doing musicals and stuff like that, you know. You know what? A round of applause for that one. <laughs> I know, you know I what? I liked it. I did. I guess so. He didn't like our song, but you we show support yeah, where, we do. you know, hopefully we will gain that same support. However, you know, Melanin and Merlot is coming at you very quickly, very soon. We also have another cast member, um, a part of Melanin and Merlot. And the this bartender. Is, this is a bartender. But however, this is... Sir Adonis and Sir Ooh. Adonis is going to be serving us the finest Merlot and wines. Now I don't know much about wine. Oh. I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I know I like you know when I do drink wine, I drink a Cabernet. I okay. drink Merlot. Um, I don't drink Moscato because that's no. a, that's a dessert wine, nigga. Right, and it's super um. cliche. <laughs> Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank I you for educating. Ma- I about spit. We were gonna make sure to educate him on the show that's about that, but you know, that's a dessert wine, nigga. In, nope. the, <laughs> in the words of Fonte. That part. In the words of Fonte, I got to hey, give Fonte his props. Shout for that. out to NCCU. We in the building, Fonte. Oh, yeah. Fonte Globe. You so, know, first so, video chick speeding. So, oh yeah, you were in that first video. I weren't was you? in that first video. So Ooh. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell that story. How'd that go down? Oh, well, how'd how that happen? I was in a dorm room at NCCU. Um, I was in Baines, I believe. I think it was my sophomore year. Or was that my? No, actually, it was my freshman year. I was in Eagleson. Oh, they got you. I was in Eagleson. You was a young, at, impressionable you know, freshman, and they said you can be in a video, no, and you actually, was like, cool. No, actually, <laughs> Pooh is my homeboy. I mean, all of them are real cool. Pooh called me, hit me up. Uh, he was like, Kia, you want to be in the video? I was like, sure, nigga. Uh, yeah, I want to be in the video. He was like, get your home, girl. So I called them all up. And the only one that could go, because the rest of them was booed up, uh, the only one that was available to go was my home girl Megan. And so we shot the video on campus, on the data uh, bus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the little bus, that you know, the little Red. shuttle bus Red. that goes around Durham. And for those don't know... Bull City, City, yeah, in the building. I can rep Bull City a little yeah. bit. Oh, you can rep Bull little. City. Yeah. So that's how you know it began, and we shot the video speeding. Nice, nice, nice. And so I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys have way more stories, kind of like this, right? Oh, well, you know. I yes. mean, y'all got y'all got some <laughs> stories you can't tell. I'm sure you got stories you know. that you can't tell. Yeah, we but you know, it's, it's it's all about the stories. You guys are very interesting individuals. Now, you both. Uh, we're, okay, so Nola B, where are you from? Well, to make the story short, long story short, uh, 
I'm a military kid, so oh, oh, foreign Pope Air Force Base, you lived a lot of places. Yo, yeah. your dog really is about to go. He's super your dog jealous. Is wild. Y'all, he wants to be a part of the show, maybe one day. Yo, I, I, I feel like your dog, like, really about to come out here and, like, beat me up. And he's all of, like, what? Maybe, well, he's a little on the heavier your side. Dog kinda gangster. He's maybe 12 pounds. <laughs> your dog a thug. Your dog ran up He's a gangster, came, but first he's a lover. Yes, he is lover. such a lover. He'll give you high fives. And hugs. And hugs, you know. But he feels some type of way because there's drinks and, and things. So your and dog's so, an alcoholic. Yeah. Well, Among I mean, things. you know, I, I, he's cultured. He's cultured. Say that. He's cultivated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's a cultivated Pomeranian. That's yeah. an inside joke, guys. So, it is. so uh, and Miss K. Dion, where are you from? I'm from the Queen City right here in Charlotte, North Carolina, born and raised, baby. So you, you've you been here since, like, before people showed up. I mean, you know, <laughs> bef- really, I, yeah, you know. Because ain't nobody here from here. It, well, there are, That's it's still a few of us still here, you know. I mean, I can shout a few out, but, you know, we rare. Yeah, yeah. We're rare. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. I'm not even from here, so, you know. <laughs> I know. I, I love it here. I love, yeah, I love here. Charlotte. But we do have a connection, though. Though you're not from here, but my family is from Montgomery, Alabama. And I know true, that you're true. from Birmingham, Absolutely. Alabama. So we do have that connection here, and I'm Roll Tide. Roll Tide, <laughs> here we roll, go. Tide roll, yes. And you both went to HBCUs, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, where'd, where'd you go, KDI? I went to North Carolina Central University. Home of the Eagles, right? Home of the Eagles, Bull City, baby. Okay, and, and Nola B, where'd you go? I was just waiting for you to ask. Okay, so the best HBCU, <laughs> uh, North Carolina you went to Agriculture. Howard? You tried it. North Carolina <laughs> Agricultural and Technical State University, for short. Aggie Pride. You said that like he was probating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, I just, I just all those that. Aggies out there. I just need Best homecoming on earth. G-Ho. G-Ho. Greatest homecoming mm-hmm. on earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not even going to deny that. Y'all do have a pretty good We got homecoming. a lot from North Carolina. Yeah, I, went to, I, I went to G-Ho one time and realized that I could have not gone to North Carolina a Well, But for why? I fell in love like 57 times. Oh, like, absolutely. it was amazing. I'm so, sure you would have. I'll, I'll, t- yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why I didn't go to HBCU. Because wow. I knew, because, well, number one, the finances weren't there. All right. Uh, where I went to school at, they gave me, you know, a full scholarship. And I, I got a partial scholarship from FAMU. Mm. There's more to the story, but I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. But um, I went to a couple of HBCU homecomings my senior year of high school. And I was girl crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I was already girl crazy I in high school. I see that. And so to see all these beautiful sisters that could read and with, and with, and with, and with hell and, 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 and other features, yes. you know. Yeah. And I, I, man, okay, so I went to Tuskegee Homecoming one time, and I saw this girl. She was just perfect, and she had pretty feet and could read and had all her teeth, and I just knew it was over for me. And it was like 12 <laughs> I had all her teeth now. It was like 12 All her teeth? I would have, you know how many kids I would have had by now? You I, know what? Let me tell you I'd something. I'd have been 19 years old. Ain't no pulling out. <laughs> I'd have been, I'm sorry. You say you the one. I didn't. I didn't come. You the one. Hey, no, people. But you know when you, when you go, this whole conversation. right? I mean, you know, to your point at HBCUs. I mean, to a male, it's like what ten or fifteen to one at that time when we were right. in school. Yeah, you know, and that was two yeah, years ago. We're not going to tell y'all. Age. I, 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 right. I, we're around the same age. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, are. Around I know the same at Tennessee age. State it was like eighteen to one at one point. Yeah, that is crazy. You guys had it made right at a. You could have had one. Damn, yeah. You're right. Damn near a uh, like different fish girl in a barrel, huh? every week. <laughs> every I mean, two weeks. <laughs> I mean, PWIs wasn't that different. Change females like you change draws. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> P- PWIs yeah. wasn't that different. Though. <laughs> this is true. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, you know, especially it might have been a little bit more freaky, actually. Yeah, for, I, hear. For, for, I hear it might be a little. Uh, you know, PWIs. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, I'll tell you like this the partying is different. It yeah. is. Oh, I, yeah. I, I yeah. have party. I, 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 I don't too. think I missed it. I don't think I missed it. Shout out to my boy Phil. Shout out to April Jackson, Miss Tuskegee 2005. Um, I don't think I missed th- those were some of my friends down there at Tuskegee. And I don't think I missed a Tuskegee homecoming for a couple of years. And I went, I would go and have so much fun. Whereas at PWIs, like, you know, we partied with our people specifically. Like every time the Kappas threw a party, every time the Alphas threw a party. Every, matter of fact, the Kappa House, the Alpha House, and the Delta House was all on the same street when I first got to school, and they would all throw parties on the same night, and it would right. turn into a block party. Oh yes, we would shut down the whole parking lot, and it would be great. And so, you know, we would party there, but then we could go down to the strip and party with you know the colonizers. 
And you know, there you go. They had, they had. You know a- what? Every time you catch me, <laughs> I'm taking a sip of my nice cold beverage, and I'm almost at the point <laughs> and spitting it out. Jesus, why do you do me like that every time? See, there you go, cutting okay, up. So I'm gonna be warning when you say colonizers. It, okay, it gets me every time. I'm gonna, up. I'm gonna tell this story and then we're gonna move on because I want to. I want to make it focused on y'all. So okay. I, I'll never forget. It was like my sophomore or junior year. The cap was through a party with Zeta Beta Ta. Um, which was a white fraternity. And if you've never been to, like, Alabama, like, they have multi-million dollar homes down there on the campus. Uh, they just t- showed the Five Mew house. It has a fountain in the courtyard. First of all, they have a courtyard, let alone a fountain. So the thing is about it is, like, we went to this party. I walk in the door. I see my boy Ziggy. Ziggy's like, oh, what's up? I'm like, yo, what up? What up? I, I know him from way back in the day from back home. So we get there, and we kicking it. And he said, let me introduce somebody. So he introduced this guy. Dude says, hey, man, you're a friend of Ziggy. You're a friend of mine. Uh, come on over here. We went to the, we went, we went to the bathroom. Right. They had an open bathroom, and then it had a, it had a bathtub in it. And so in the bathtub was nothing but ice and beer. Mm-hmm. He said, we got the beer in the bathtub. We got an open bar over there. Just get whatever you want. The pledges will make your drinks. They know how to make all those freaking drinks. Yep. And if you want to go upstairs, you know, we got other stuff upstairs. I said, well, okay, let's go upstairs. Yep. This is where the story don't ends. Don't go upstairs. Because I don't know the statute of limitations on drug possession, <laughs> and I don't want nobody asking me questions <laughs> yeah, don't go upstairs. about what the boys had down there. But it was just a different atmosphere. But I know I had so much fun. Every time I went to A&M, every time I went to – Tuskegee, Bama State. My best friend back in college went to Bama State. And so I would be down there all the time. Shout out to Beta Oop, the Beta Upsilon chapter, Alpha Phi Alpha. They always showed me love. So, oh, also Beta Zeta Nine Greater, the chapter Delta Sigma Theta down there. Love them too. Yeah, you got to because my mama uh, pledged at Alabama State. Hey. Beta Eta, 73. Hey. Okay. Uh, Delta. Yeah, Anyhow. So um, let's, let's, let's talk more about you guys. So, Melanin and Merlot. Yes. What does that mean? to you that's a deep question it's, it is a deep question dun, dun, dun. i think it is a way of living a way of living a wow. way of living um, i like that yeah it is a way of it's living a it's a lifestyle it is. you know um it signifies who we are mm. and we're sophisticated ladies that drink the finest wines mm-hmm. and so melanin merlot was just so it just fit. It, it it fit. It just came together. It was, it was effortless thought, mm-hmm. and it embodies us. So um, we embrace it, and that's who we are. So Nola B, what is? Yeah, to sum it up, yes, we're baby. black chicks. There you go, baby. <laughs> that like red wine. Hello, red red wine. Yes. Oh my god. So here's the thing. So like this. Now you said sophisticated. Now sophisticated doesn't mean bougie though. No. Because y'all are, like, not bougie, but you are. You, you guys are classy. You guys are very classy. And what is our coined we, word? We like to call ourselves clatchets. Yes, we're clatchets. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure you guys have heard of that term, you know? We're a little classy. With a dash of, dash of ratchetness, yes. maybe. Just, just a dash. dash. Just now, a dash. I, I, maybe I've, two dashes. I've been in the car with y'all, so I know what y'all listen <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah, we like trap music. Oh, I, I definitely do trap music on my way to work. All the time. All the time. I mean, it's cool because I, I be corporate thugging too. Like before I go in any meeting, I, I, I kid you not. Before I go in any like meeting where I'm presenting, like I'm listening to Rick Ross. Like I kid you not, I walked into a meeting thinking in my head, these niggas won't hold me back. I'm I'm serious. I do it all the time. Exactly. So yeah, I, I, I stand up in front of people and it was going in my head. It's not what I'm presenting on the board. It's I think I'm big meat. Oh, just saying. <laughs> not whipping work. <laughs> hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Okay. Hey. I dig it. Okay. So what can we expect from Melanin and Merlot? Like, I know you guys have a lot of thoughts, a lot of stories, a lot of opinions, a lot of beliefs, a lot of ideas. Tell me what we can expect from Melanin and Merlot. Well, what do you think, Katie? On, um, realness? Ex- expect a lot of laughter. Laughter. <laughs> Entertainment, to say the least. We're going to deliver a lot of positive content we hope to share our stories with you because we are, you know, pretty deep. Being a, being a black woman in the age of Trump, in the age of Me Too, you know, in, in a society that doesn't value you. Because I've talked about this on uh, Kind of Sleepy, that the black woman is the least valued and least protected woman in yeah. the country, least protected demographic in the country. I'm sure it has to, at times, be frustrating. And so, you know, I'm sure you guys are going to share your stories regarding yeah. that and the things that you go through on a daily basis. Um, Absolutely. Definitely. With that being said, how has it been 
um, being a black woman in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, corporate thugging in the age of Trump? Like, what what does that mean to you? I mean, it's challenging for me, you know, every day, you know, to try to muster up a lot of, you know, positive energy just to go into the workplace where you know you're looked at as different, you know, you're treated different, um, you're not respected, your voice is not necessarily heard when you're speaking to um, either uh, your manager or a higher up or executive. So it's definitely challenging in the workplace. You know, outside of work, we do face, you know, different um, things. They're n- not all negative, but, um, you know, we're just trying to take every day one day with strides yeah. and yeah one day at a time you know and still try to be positive and still try to show that black women can still be successful um and you don't have to really result to you know a lot of uh things that may not be a positive depiction and portrayal of who you are exactly you know? yeah so so talk to me and nola b uh well for me I've been here five years, and and being a black woman in corporate America, to sum it up, has not been easy. Um, Some days are good, some days are bad, but we hope to share those stories with you guys on the show and get some feedback. How do you get through it? Uh, Maybe we can share how we get through it or don't get through it, because, you know, I'm still going through it. I don't know about you, Katie, and I believe you are, too. So, Um, But it's rewarding uh, at times, and sometimes it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. It's late nights. When, you know, the colonizers, as you say, uh, <laughs> get to go home and go to sleep. Right. Uh, or get the recognition for your work. So mm. those are things we're definitely going to cover on the show. So another thing I know that's kind of a hot topic specifically, and in Charlotte, it's been, um, you know, back when I could talk about it and discuss it, you know, with my friends and peers, it was dating. So dating in Charlotte. <laughs> well, seeing as how you're from here, I mean, you left and came Ooh, back. Yeah. <laughs> It's you, terrible. You said you you said that like you was weary. Ooh. Like I'm, I got these one of my old folk words. You was yes, weary honey. thinking about that. Too fit to be tired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's it's awful. I mean to be quite well, honest. Dang. Would you say? I, mean, awful? I ain't gonna be awful. Is. I mean you're both attractive women. I'm well, sure yes, guys I'm come and dating get here day. in Charlotte. I mean you know it's. It's like it's trying to be a party city, you know, Ah. and a a lot of the guys just want to party and, you know, and all of that. And, now, you know, I'm of age where I'm not really interested in partying, you know, and so it's kind of hard to find or meet uh, a decent guy that, you know, is going in the same direction that you are in life. You know, I don't really find or I haven't found anyone that I'm equally yoked with. Mm. Mm, what about you? One word, cliche. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Dating in Charlotte is very cliche. Everyone's important. Everyone wants to be someone oh, important. Oh, that's true. Uh, well, it, uh, it, and, and, no, and no diss to Atlanta, but it's not Atlanta, though. It's, uh, trying it's to be. getting there. It's trying to be. Yeah, it's definitely it's getting funny. there. Everybody I meet in Atlanta is like the CEO oh, of yeah. this oh, or the president you know? of that or the owner of this. And I'd be right. like. But wait, and, and it goes both ways for men and women because I, you know I've Yo. seen women you know put on a best outfit and step out in like the first Toyota Corolla ever made. You know what? You better speak red that bottoms truth. and all. Wait. But we're gonna leave that alone. Wait. Ooh, you better speak that truth, wait. honey. Oh, so again, she cliche. Said the, she said the first. You all will, and they got bundles too. Oh, you know what? You all will get a lot of tea. Absolutely from melanin and merlot, yeah. baby. So please tune in, honey, because we got a lot of things to mm. share. Okay, that Ooh, part this is gonna be interesting. I cannot wait for y'all. Oh yes, watch. and the shade is real. <laughs> I don't need shade. Oh, just I do. truth. <laughs> well, whatever. Okay, shade of truth. Same thing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh my god, we're just kidding. Not yeah, okay. Me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay. So, there is another aspect of the show that uh, I'm really interested in, and another aspect of both of you. I mean, you guys are both natural. Yes. And so, like, you're natural. How long have you guys been natural? Uh, it will be well, it's five years for me in December. Six years for me in this okay, December. Okay. So, so, so up. what happened was you moved here and said, you know what, I'm Completely cutting perm out. I'm gonna change my life. You had a whole what's I, the name from waiting to exhale Bernadette moment. Absolutely, I did. Yep. The fact that I remember that random bit of trivia is weird yep. to me. But Let's hey, we're gonna keep rolling you know with it. There's a there it is. So, a kid so, for so speaking of that, have you ever set somebody's car on fire? 
No. She I don't look good in jumpsuits. She said so I try to stay out of legal trouble. <laughs> you know, everyone can't wear a jumpsuit. I don't have the shape for it. <laughs> but you set your hair on fire? Yes. yes, I did set my hair on fire one time. <laughs> Uh, and thanks to my good friend Katie on, she saved me. I was more concerned about my hair. She's like, "Thank God it wasn't your face." Right? <laughs> yeah. So wait, I, you know what? We're gonna save that for the show. Oh yes, that's kind of fast. Trust me, we have wild ones. For we you. have a lot of stories. We're classy and ratchet. ratchet. <laughs> so, Katie, uh, tell me, how long have you been natural? Um, it will be eight years this coming mm-hmm. December. So, what made you guys go natural? Uh, you know. Uh, my friend convinced me honestly to go natural Bonnie shout out to Milwaukee hey Bonnie okay she uh convinced me to go natural and so I decided to do that and I actually cut out my own relaxer oh, wow. I gradually cut my hair or you know cut the relaxer out like the straight pieces so I didn't do like a full-blown chop you know that first time but I um gradually cut the relaxer out so and now, given everything that we've talked about just in the past couple of minutes, how has being natural kind of had an impact on both your corporate life as well as your dating? Oh, put me in, coach. Go ahead. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm the only black girl in the office. Uh, in my new job, I was really excited to see a lot of us. But my last job, I was the only black girl uh, for the longest, and I was definitely looked at differently. There would be things like, oh, I like your hair straight, little subtle things like that. Or, you know, my um, vice president of my company just told me I look like Sideshow Bob. So, wow. Yeah. Um, and I can promise you guys I don't look like Sideshow Bob. Well, maybe no, I do when I pineapple you, it up. But No, you don't. Yeah. You, you don't look like Sideshow Bob. But this is, this is what he said. Shot. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, I've had a lot of comments. Or even people that don't come off as racist, they'll just say things like, well, I just think you look better with your hair straight. You know, and I'll ask them, well, what makes me look better with my hair straight what's the difference um and I can never answer it but that's the thing I I didn't I don't style my hair or myself or what other people think I don't really care in Um, dating um actually black men love it uh ladies word to the wise they're kind of getting sick of all the shedding bundles (laughs) um so men absolutely love it that shade is real baby um they are you know just i've been been told by a lot of guys um you know from all walks of life that they really do enjoy natural hair girls i mean i mean you know you get up in the morning the track still left on the pillow Mm -hmm. (laughs) right or i still look like who i am when you went to sleep with so i mean i'm winning Wow. Uh, so, <laughs> KD K- K- Winning. Huh? Winning. So, yes, sir. Uh, corporate America and dating in your natural hair journey. How's that going? Uh, you know, I switch up my hairstyle a lot. And, you know, they're so infatuated with what is KD Young going to do next. You know, how she's going to do her, her hair. They all like to want to touch it. <laughs> you know, to feel it. And you say, oh my God, I love your hair like that. And I get a lot of positive responses from um, your coworkers and teammates yes, and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, what does bother me is the fact that they want to touch my hair. Now, I'm God, yeah. Lunch. Don't touch my yeah, hair. Yeah, don't touch my hair. They want to touch it. <laughs> it's not a, it's not like an attraction. But in terms of dating, um, just like Nola B said, the men love it. They actually prefer natural hair. And, you know, they love to put their hands in it, right. you know, just love they can the pull whole, it. Yeah, just love the whole, hey. you know, eccentric look. You know, they just love it. We don't look like everyone else. So right? you, you said uh, when you first started that you kind of change your hair up all the time. So, I do. You know, like... <laughs> I seen the I've seen the meme on Facebook that says, you know, if your man say he wanna see other people, you'd be like, Oh, so who you want? You want you want me to curl it like this? You want me to straighten it out? You want me to braid it? What you want? You want Cleo from set it and off? That is the beauty of black women though. You know? Right. We can do yeah. that. You know, we're versatile, but no, my you know, my men would prefer me to stay natural. Now I don't get braids. Now I have worn weed. Right, you know, yeah. I we don't hate on that. So we were just making a joke. You know, yeah. I've done all of that, yada, yada, yada. And, I, you know, I'm not against it. However, yeah. I'm not doing that, you know, right now or so, yeah. probably for. Yeah, I, I think I'm done. But women yeah. are beautiful. And that's a good thing about black women. Mm-hmm. We can do everything and all. So, right. you know, if you want to wear the bundles, do it. And I think that's why they're so inquisitive. Mm-hmm. 
to try to figure out how do we get our hair to go from curly to straight. You know, when I straightened out my hair, one woman at work, <coughs> she said, Kia, Katie on actually. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch that from record. Yep. Uh, <laughs> is that your hair? And I said. Oh, yeah, I got that one too a I'm lot. Like, no bitches fur. Right. <laughs> Oh my That's God. what you want to say. That's the right. first thing that comes to mind, right? Like, is that your hair? Is that your hair? Because they, you know, they wear extensions too. Exactly. And I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. You know, but I guess, see, they really, see, the shrinkage is real. The shrinkage Nola is B. real. The, the, the <laughs> yes. shrinkage is so real. And so they cannot imagine that your hair is that long when you straighten it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I could see why you asked if it was my hair, but uh, yes, ma'am, it was. So, okay, so I noticed you said something uh, when you first got into the story. You said, my men prefer my hair to yeah, be natural. Yourself, Jesus. So, you a, you, a, you a player out here. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. uh, you got your fair share of suitors. No, One, two, three, four, I, five, five. You, you know what? Um, you just keep your options open. You know, you see... You put me in this situation. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to get Please. clarification, you know, yes. for the, for the fellas I, that may listen, and you know, they want them, you know, the black Betty Boop. And, and and that's what I, you know, I feel like I channel the black Betty Boop. I feel like I look like her, you know, damn near. I'm shaped like her. I got the fro like her, you know. So I'm honestly back to your point. <laughs> I am not a player at all. I mm-hmm. am single. Yes, I am. I'm not married. I have no ring. So, therefore, I am what? Single, right? And dating. And I'm As dating. she should be. You should be dating. I should you be know? dating. Thank you, Nola B. So, any suitors out there, I'm actually, you know, open. So, you know, come find your girl. Mm, oh, my God. Hit up <laughs> Nola B first so that she can run him through her, her background yes. check. Yes. Yes. Um, so you you're the bouncer. You're the relationship bouncer. She here. is. You kind of you kind of like the bodyguard. Well, you, you know, I feel like <sighs> I feel like you like a, a really cute, quirky Suge Knight. I am. <laughs> That's a, you is. know what I am. I, I am. love that. I am. <laughs> uh, and I think it's you know because. Katie Ann is a more of a, a serial relationship person. She's been yes. in long term relationships. You don't want the nigga that you talking to uh, dancing. <laughs> to harass you. All in the Insta lives. <laughs> <laughs> Come see Katie Young. Yeah. Nola B. <laughs> and Nola She's B. Out. Okay, you gotta go through Nola B first. Yeah, but. because, you know, Katie Ann is such a sweet person, and I think that she will give everyone a chance, and everyone is not deserving of a chance. That Sorry, is fellas. true. Yeah, you're right. That is you know, true, but I have you're, you're, you know, yeah. been in a long relationship. Yeah. So, What's your longest relationship been? Oh, my God. Um... It, it it was it was going on ten years. Man, when you get together when y'all was twelve? You know what kind of shit is this? <laughs> I, right, exactly, right. Uh it, it you was niggas a, are disgusting. It's it's, <laughs> been, it's been a it was a long time. All right, R. Kelly. And, <laughs> you know, I, I don't regret it, however, I just cannot spend you another day it. right you in learned from it. going through the same cycle. So All right. And what about you? What's been your longest relationship, Miss Nolan? Um Six years, and that's been a while. Six years. Six years. Okay. Yeah, hey, I ain't mad at that. Um, my longest relationship has been about seven months. All and right. Well, <laughs> let's give it up for your seven month run. All right. Just give it up. No, I'm kidding. My longest relationship has been three years. Um, and truth be told, I wish I could get back all that time. So we're gonna oh, leave that there. We're gonna keep it moving. So. <laughs> No, Don't we are? I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot about myself, and I learned about other people as mm-hmm. well. You know, everybody doesn't necessarily want to see you happy, and sometimes people that want to see you unhappy the most is the people that you're with. Yeah. So that's another Sad story. But true. Mm-hmm. That's a whole. That's other story. a whole another episode. So, ladies, we're coming up on the time limit mark, the thirty minute mark. Oh, it seems like it went by so fast. It did. We had so much fun. But before we go, mm-hmm. we want Adonis to um, have Come a on, word. Mr. Bartender. Come on, Mr. We Bartender. We need our bartender. Okay, don't kick over the microphone. Mic. <laughs> Adonis is getting on. So, Mr. Mr. Adonis. In the building. <laughs> So, Mr. Donis is here for color commentary and to serve the best of the best in drinks. 
So tell us uh, where you from, man. Long story. <laughs> okay. Originally from Teaneck, New Jersey. From Teaneck, New Jersey. From Teaneck, New Jersey. So that means you stabbed at least three people. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't I'm know. Like that. <laughs> you know, I'm coming from New Jersey. Like, that. <laughs> I'm just saying, Jersey, Jersey's a, a scary place sometimes. Well, we're in North Jer- Northern Jersey, so Bergen County. So okay, yeah. okay, so North Jersey. Okay, so y'all closer yeah. to like the mountains and more snow. <laughs> Got you. All right. Okay. Not more snow. Yeah. Got you. Okay. I was scared for a second. I was like, man, you're going to stab me in 3.2 seconds. And make you a good drink. And make... <laughs> yes, I stabbed you. Now, here's a here's a long island. Shut the hell up. <laughs> so <laughs> so tell us, tell us uh, what brought you to the south? What brought you to Charlotte? Charlotte? Well, actually, my job brought me here. Okay. Five years ago. We're not going to ask you what you do because we want plausible deniability if your job ever come to you. Cool. cool. All right. <laughs> so your job brought you here five years ago. And do you love Charlotte? I love it. I love awesome. it. Sick. Now, how did you get acquainted with the quote unquote black Cagney and Lacey here? Well, Kay Dion actually at my, she was actually my supervisor. Oh. <laughs> Bosses. I hired him. So she hired him and yes. then she quit. <laughs> That's what happened. She brought you in well, the door and then left you hanging, right? That's what happened. No, 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 no. Well, um, she just was such a rising star climbing the corporate ladder. She went on to bigger and better things. Hey. That's what's up. That's what's up. We'll be glad to have you on the show, brother. Appreciate Good it. Good to be here. And I'm, and I'm glad to have you as part of the Kind of Sleepy family. I'm glad to have Melanin and Merlot as part Ooh. of the Kind of Sleepy family. And before we go off, um, I'd like to give everybody the opportunity to say something. So, Nola B., what you want to tell the people? We're just excited. Excited to share our lives with you guys, and hopefully you share your lives with us. Outstanding. What about you, Mr. Adonis, since you're on the mic right now? I'm excited. Always to make these drinks for y'all, and we got some <laughs> good things coming through for you. Uh, okay, okay. And Black Betty Boob, K. Dion, what you what you got to say? <clears throat> uh, you know, no being Adonis uh, summed it up very well, and we just want you guys to be a part of something great. Share your stories with us. We're gonna share ours with you, and we just want to continue to uplift our people. And and everyone. That part. And and just so y'all know, uh, Kay Dion is fancy because she her nails are Tiffany blue, so that, she, that 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 means she real fancy. So fellas, if you out there listening, um, she needs a Tiffany ring to match that because she's exactly. not accepting nothing less because she fancy. In Jesus name, she, she receives it. <laughs> Amen. When, Amen. Did you just smack the mic? <laughs> just, just laying hands on this. Hands on hands. I'm Kojic, by the way, guys. I'm Kojic, by the way. Oh, oh, okay. Now, if you start dancing, and I, I know I'm gonna take off running. Wear, wear the white sheets so I can lay it yeah. on you when you fall out. The prayer cloth. Don't worry about it. I got. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You ain't coach. You got pants on. Yeah, you you got, well, I'm at home. Don't tell me now. Uh, all this coaching people. He laughs. Anyway, we out of here, man. We'll catch y'all next time on the Comedy Podcast. Peace.